Keep your marbles intact, love. At least until I lose mine. Too late, I'm ranking every single enemy in Dark Souls 3 from worst to best. Well, that came out of nowhere. Alright, we're back to the enemy rankings, and well, this is easily going to be the longest one so far. But this was also probably the most interesting one I've done, since Dark Souls 3 has a weird contrast of housing a pretty good chunk of the most annoying enemies in the series, while also having a lot of genuinely awesome ones. But like usual, let's go over the criteria, which will be pretty similar to the Sekiro one. And the most important category, like always, is of course the moveset. Two of the biggest factors that can bring down the quality of an enemy are being too simple to the point that they're boring, or being too demanding to the point that they're unfair. So most of the best enemies tend to walk the fine line of having a moveset that's complex enough to demand your attention, while also not crossing the line of being too spammy. Category 2 is how the enemies are used which includes factors such as the enemies being placed in a memorable spot, creating a dynamic situation, or of course, if they have any over-the-top and unfair ganks, which can potentially knock them down a few spots. And lastly, Category 3 is any miscellaneous aspects like having cool designs or fitting well with their area. This time around, I also decided to disclude NPCs, environmental hazards, and bosses returning as enemies. But I am including some combatants, which some people refer to as mini-bosses, as I personally just see them as really beefy enemies. In addition, I'm actually going to divide the list into tiers for the first time, which will be bad, meh, average, good, and great. And like usual, a lot of the enemies of similar types will be grouped together, since literally ranking every single variant of every single enemy type on their own would just be far too redundant. And finally, just remember that the list is entirely subjective. Everyone has different experiences, and most of you are bound to disagree with at least a few choices. And with all that out of the way, let's begin. So, considering that this is the longest list I've done so far, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, this must have been the hardest choice to make for the worst enemy. No. It's the Jailers. That is one big pile of shit. These enemies are unquestionably one of the most bullshit things FromSoft has ever concocted. Their main gimmick is just the fact that, if they see you, your health continually drains. But it's not just your health, they literally cause your max HP to drain. So you can't even heal to negate the effects, you have to wait for it to come back. Also, if they manage to hit you, then it makes your character fat roll for like 5 seconds. Why? Honestly, there are other enemies that get on my nerves a bit more. Like, admittedly, if you really don't want to deal with these things, running past their sections isn't too difficult. But I think they deserve the bottom spot for just being such a terrible concept that's also terribly executed. Also this room. Screw this room. Number 78, Angels. Unlike the Jailers, these things will always actively make your experience more annoying. They just float up in the sky and rain rapid fire lasers down on you, which do a fair bit more damage than I think they should. At least they got nerfed after launch, they used to be downright disgusting. Honestly, one of my biggest problems with these things is how they discourage exploration. Plus, the one that specifically sits right above a poison swamp is such a cruel placement. The one redeeming thing I can say about them is that they don't respawn when killed. And the spell Hidden Body makes them a lot easier to deal with, but I usually don't use it since this is the last Souls game I'd play with a Sorcerer build. Overall, I definitely think the game would be better without these things. Number 77, Maggot Grubs. So, on top of not being very fun to fight, these things come with one of the worst gimmicks in the entire game. Where if they hit you a single time, even if you block it, you get covered in maggots and lose a decent chunk of health every time the meter is filled. This goes on for like two minutes, and it just feels like such a kick in the balls considering they're found in one of the most difficult bonfire to bonfire stretches in the early game. So most smart players will choose to just avoid them entirely. One nice tip though is that they get stuck in long animations if you use fire on them. Number 76, Infested Corpses. And these guys are one spot higher since they have the same gimmick as the Maggot Grubs, except their moveset isn't as punishing. And their design is at least somewhat interesting with Maggot Grubs coming out of them, so they're basically like a slightly less offensive version of them. Number 75, Giant Flies. While these things once again have the Maggot Bleed gimmick, they're higher than the previous two because they actually have some regular attacks that don't cause it to happen. They have to actually get you with their grab or eye beam to initiate it. And since they take place in the first DLC, this gimmick isn't as punishing since you most likely have a lot more health than Estus by that point. But their version of it is actually even more damaging, and they're mostly found in some really hefty ganks that feel shitty if you actually try to fight them all. So they still suck, but I think the fact that you reach them so late in the game realistically makes them suck a little less. Number 74, Thralls. 
Do you like dogs in the From Software games? I'd wager that you don't, since they're fast and spammy and work terribly when paired with other enemies. And to me, thralls seem like they tried to find a way of having enemies similar to dogs, but just even more annoying. They're also fast and spammy, except now they have melee weapons, blow darts, and some of the most punishing ambushes in the game. These sneaky boys even hang from the ceiling to drop down on you. So they really suck, and I have no clue why they thought it was a good idea to copy their moveset onto new enemies in Elden Ring as if we wouldn't notice. Genjutsu of that level doesn't work on me. And now at 73, we have dogs. At this point, I don't think much needs to be said. Dog enemies almost always suck in these games. They're quick, ridiculously spammy, and work terribly alongside other enemies. Plus, they teleport in this game, making them even worse. But I don't want to shit talk them anymore today, so instead I'm just gonna remind myself that dogs are great by petting my dog in real life. Number 72, wolves. And it turns out I have to shit talk them more anyway. You know, I actually had wolves a fair bit higher on this list originally. I always thought they worked decently well and were relatively more methodical than dogs since they're more passive and take turns attacking you. But honestly, there are often just so many of them that it doesn't even matter. They almost managed to fix the idea of dogs, but in execution, I think they're just slightly less annoying. At number 71, I have the Grues, which includes the Grunts, Conjurators, Mad Grues, and worst of all, the Leaping Gru. In general, these guys just suck and aren't fun to fight. They have lots of annoyingly spammy attacks, and they also cause poison buildup whenever they hit you. You know, just in case you weren't already poisoned by the massive poison swamp most of them are found in. The Grunts are just the basic ones, the Conjurators are similar, but but also use a spell which can poison you, considering you weren't already poisoned. The Mad Gurus run on all fours and are about equally as annoying, but the crown jewel of shit goes to the Leaping Gurus. These things are so jumpy and spammy and have one of the most repetitive annoying grab attacks ever. So yeah, these guys get a lot of hate and it's well deserved. Number 70, Corvians. Once again, we have some ridiculously spammy enemies, and also once again, they work terribly in group fights. Plus, they even have this one super annoying attack that seems to be taken from the crows in Bloodborne. These things are almost always found in large numbers too, which adds a lot to their annoyance. There's also the spellcasting ones, who are relatively harmless, and originally I considered putting these guys higher. But they also have the ability to yell, causing nearby Corvians to come attack you, so I think they also belong here. Number 69, Rock Lizards. These things are responsible for potentially one of the cruelest sections in any of these games. They're just so perfectly placed along with the dragon that swoops in to make it so that you get stuck and end up dying. These guys are like the definition of a troll enemy. If you fight one by itself, you probably won't die, but their annoying roll attacks combined with spraying fire and having basically infinite poise is just the perfect recipe for a super cheesy enemy. Number 68, Puss of Man. Overall, these enemies are spammy and unnecessarily tanky, and I don't enjoy fighting them. However, I have to admit that they actually are manageable when you learn them. About two out of every five attacks, they do this one five hit combo, which is pretty easy to punish afterwards. So from my experience, if you want to safely defeat one, you can rely on the strategy of only attacking after they do this combo. That being said, their moves are generally just too erratic and punishing for me to actually call them good, but there is a bit of method to the madness, and they're usually placed so that you can fight them individually. Number 67, Ringed City Hollows. These guys are sort of like a diet version of Thralls. They're fast, spammy, and they try to ambush you, but they just do it in a slightly less annoying manner. However, they also try to push you off of ledges, they're often found in ganks, and there's a version of them that can curse you just by being in their line of sight, so they definitely still deserve to be in the bottom tier. Number 66, Hollow Clerics. Sometimes I really don't have much against these guys. Like, if you take your time picking them off, they can be relatively simple to deal with, but overall, they do kinda suck. Their main attack is just this dumb spell where they try to put a ring around you that makes you take damage while inside it, and if you try hitting them, they'll turtle under their shell and use the same spell to heal themselves, which also damages you in the process. So if you don't have a nice method of knocking them out of the shell, they may just heal themselves over and over. Also, if you run past them, they can keep hitting you with their spell from far away, which feels so damn unnecessary. The one thing I like about these guys is this weird spinny move.
I think that's pretty funny. And at the top of the bad tier, I have the Hollow Priests, since they're basically a mild inconvenience with no redeeming qualities. The only thing they do is just heal nearby enemies, which are usually Lothric Knights, and since you pretty much have to put all of your attention into fighting a Lothric Knight, having to run over and take the priests out is an annoying disruption that can sometimes make you take damage from behind. So, like I said, they're just a mild inconvenience. Number 64, Man Serpents. So, now that we're onto the meh tier, these are mostly enemies that are just uninteresting and don't have much to say about them, or kinda suck but have redeeming features. Many of the placements in this tier are somewhat interchangeable, since I have very little to say about a good chunk of them. The Man Serpents in particular are enemies that I feel have a worse reputation than they actually deserve. Sometimes they can be a bit too spammy and annoying, but I also find that they're just okay a lot of the time. And the big ones, while potentially annoying as well, can occasionally be somewhat fun to fight. But the huge, horrendous gank of them at the end of Archdragon Peak solidifies them as still being pretty low on the list. Number 63, Lycanthrope Hunters. These guys are like the definition of mildly annoying with no redeeming features. Their giant pokey sticks make them a bit of a hassle, but usually fighting them one-on-one -on -one is okay. Honestly, the main thing that keeps them this low is just just how damn many of them there are. The crucifixion woods are completely overflowing with them, and it's just a bit too much. Number 62, Deacons. I kind of like the designs of these guys, and their creepy chanting is somewhat memorable. Finding them for the first time in the Cathedral of the Deep is very fitting, and they go nicely with the vibe of it. But man, these guys mostly just shoot fireballs at you, and sometimes it really feels like they were perfectly placed to be the biggest pain in the ass imaginable. Like that spot where you can fight some giants after Pontiff Sullivan, if if you don't go out of your way to take out the deacons beforehand, they'll make that section an absolute nightmare. Number 61, Flesh Enemies. There are a few different variants of these things, but they're basically all the same. I really don't get why they even exist. The game wouldn't be particularly better or worse without them. They slowly move around and try to poke you, some of them drop from the ceiling and do an annoying grab attack, and for some reason they also have a ton of health. I. Moving on. Number 60, Mangrubs. These things basically just attack by flopping around, and you mostly see them in this one section where there's a bunch of them, so when fighting them, you're basically just dealing with a big wave of floppiness, and it's sort of fine, I guess. There are also a few that shoot spells at you, they're also fine, I guess, and they also have a rare chance of trying to hit you with Maggot Bleed. Good for them. Number 59, Rats and Giant Rats. And they're at the same spot, since I basically feel the same about both of them. The small rats are helpless on their own, but annoying in big numbers, which is often how you find them. And the big ones are just slightly more annoying, but are also less ganky. They only have a few attacks, and most of them aren't very good. Not really much to work with. Number 58, Basilisks. If this was a Dark Souls 1 ranking, these guys would obviously be near the very bottom. But in Dark Souls 3, getting cursed doesn't have any negative effects aside from just insta-killing you, so it isn't as punishing. And overall, they're fine. The one thing I like about them is their design. They're just weird frog things with awooga eyes. And in this game, avoiding the curse mist is relatively easy, so I often don't die to them. And therefore, I just don't have much to say about them. But the gold medal of having the least to say about an enemy in the game goes to the poison horn bugs. These things slowly walk towards you. If they get close enough, they'll try to poison you. It usually doesn't go well for them. There's also a chance they may actually try to hit you. I think they look kinda funny. That's it. Number 56, Reanimated Corpses. I like the initial surprise of seeing these guys pop out of the ground, and they obviously fit very well being found in a graveyard. I also like how some of their attacks have them just thrusting their heads at you. They occasionally do an attack that gives you the maggot bleed, but it's pretty unlikely that you'll actually get hit by it. Number 55, Caged Hollows. The reason why these things made it this high is because I just like the initial surprise when they start attacking you. I remember being genuinely jump scared when they first started moving, and from then on, I would always be wary to check which ones were still alive and which ones weren't. Moveset wise, there's not much to work with, so they're basically just carried by their surprise factor. Number 54, Crabs. These are pretty harmless little guys. I honestly think they're kinda cute. Sometimes when they group together, they can be a bit of a hassle, but they die so quick that it just doesn't really matter. Number 53, Mini Locust Preachers. From my experience, it's pretty rare for these things to actually attack you. It seems to mostly just happen when you're already being attacked by other enemies, but I just find it funny how they're super tiny versions of the regular Locust Preachers. Number 52, Rotten Slugs. Once again, these are pretty harmless little dudes. They can either spit sludge at you, or just lightly ram you. The one little room with them and an undead bone shard can be a bit annoying, but mostly I just think they're fine. Like, it's hard to imagine someone genuinely hating these things.
Number 51, Demon Statues. I like seeing these guys return from Dark Souls 1, even if, you know, they weren't from a particularly great section of that game. And they function almost exactly the same here as they did then. They slowly float around and spit some flames at you. Not very dangerous, but they have the potential to catch you off guard if you're busy fighting something else. Number 50, Bone Wheels. Another returning enemy from Dark Souls 1, except these ones are a bit different from their original version. The main difference being that they don't really get stuck on you the way the original ones did. Like, even if you stand perfectly still, they're most likely just gonna graze you with 1-4 to four hits, so they're not as deadly and infuriating as they were in the first game, but that also makes them stand out a lot less. They're just pretty forgettable in this one. Number 40, Nine Corvian Settlers. Gameplay-wise, there isn't a whole lot to say about them. Most of them don't even attack you, and the ones that do aren't really fun to fight, but I gotta appreciate that these guys do a great job at showing you the state of Ariandel. By the time you get to the Corvian Settlement, it's pretty clear that this place has gotta go. It's just rotting away, and the creatures living in it aren't enjoying their stay anymore, which helps give you some motivation to fight Frida. Number 48, Manserpent Summoners. Honestly, I had no idea where to place these things. Their main gimmick is that they'll just continuously spawn NPCs PCs for you to fight, and they're fine. I guess fighting them is a bit entertaining. And when it comes to the enemy itself, they just shoot spells at you and hit you with their whip. It's not very noteworthy. Number 47, Sewer Centipedes. The main thing I like about these things is just their weird, memorably unsettling designs. With their crazy amount of legs and their heavy metal hair, these things are some of the creepiest enemies in the game. And when it comes to the moveset, they're okay. I feel like you'd expect an enemy that looks like this to be way more annoying, but they're just fine. There are probably a few too many at the Profane Capital, though. Number 46, Wretches. For some reason, I remember despising these things initially, which is why I never really messed with them since my first playthrough. But upon fighting them again, it turns out that they're actually fine. Not super fun, but not offensive. The main thing I appreciate here is the same thing I like about the sewer centipedes. Just how creepy they are. Like the fact that the first one doesn't even fight you, but instead just stares at you. It's so unsettling. Number 45, Karthus Sandworm. I know it's kind of debatable whether this thing is an enemy or an environmental hazard, but personally, I guess I felt that it deserved to be here. Moveset-wise, there's almost nothing to mention. It randomly moving around kind of just is the moveset, so it's not particularly great. But I like the initial oh shit moment you get when you first see it, and it's cool that you can just cheese it using the giant crossbow. Number 44, Merkmen. The one thing I don't like about these guys is how many of them can be grouped together. It's just a bit too much at times. But since they're not too dangerous, it's really not that big of a deal. Overall, I like their designs, I think they work pretty well as enemies of the Dreg Heap. The spellcasters have one attack, which actually looks really cool. Cool. and it's hilarious that you can stun lock them by rolling into them, which I may have had a little too much fun with. Number 43, Scholars. I could see a lot of people putting these guys way lower. If they manage to hit you with their wax, it is kinda bullshit. And their ranged attacks combined with thralls can be a pretty punishing combo. But honestly, I just really like them aesthetically, and I think they fit well in the Grand Archives. Plus, they're usually not too much of a hassle on their own, but I admit there may be a few too many of them. Number 42, Corvian Knights. So now we have possibly the most controversial choice on the list. I don't know what the general consensus is with these guys, but for me, this is one of the few enemies on the list that I really just don't know how I feel about. I fought these things at least 15 times in preparation for the ranking, but I still just can't decide if they're good or not. Sometimes they feel pretty smooth, and dodging their attacks feels challenging but somewhat reasonably fair. And other times it just doesn't feel clean at all. Like, while you totally can fight them without taking damage, I wouldn't say the learning curve is very satisfying. At the end of the day though, even when it does work out, I don't necessarily think they're fun to fight, so I decided that near the top of meh sounds about right. It is cool that you can parry them by attacking, though. And at the very top of the meh tier, I have the Jailer Handmaids. To me, these feel like the definition of inoffensive enemies with a few annoyances. Like that spot where they shoot fireballs from a distance is kind of annoying, and if they gank you with the gargoyles, it's just a straight up unfair mess. But on their own, they just have some lightly threatening melee and ranged attacks, and they're okay. I also think they look kinda cool. Number 40, Demon Claire. So now that we've made it to the average tier, we're on to enemies that may have a flaw or two, but are overall pretty cool or well made. And the demon clerics are at the bottom for one main reason. Dealing with their floating fireballs can be an annoying hassle with a lot of builds, since if you can't shoot them with a spell, you basically need a large weapon to reach them sometimes, and this also makes ganks with them a pain. But I think these guys have some pretty decent moves mixed with some cool spells, I like their designs, and of course I love their weird distorted cat noises.
Number 39, Grave Warden Skeletons. I really wanted to put these guys higher on the list, but honestly, I can't say that they're particularly great. There are a lot of spots where they try to gank you, which doesn't work at all with this enemy type. Plus, you often end up fighting them in some pretty annoying spots. And if I'm being real, they just aren't that fun to fight. Sometimes they can be a decently enjoyable challenge, but their invisible rolling move gets a bit redundant, their weapon art goes a bit too crazy, and they can spend too much time hiding behind their shields. But I do think they deserve to be here, since I think they look cool, have an intimidating presence, presence, and like I said, they can be decently fun to fight, but in practice, they aren't as commendable as I thought they would be. Number 38, Hollow Man Servants. While these guys aren't super special either, I like how you can learn to exploit their long combos. These enemies will often get way too into their moves and keep attacking even when you aren't in front of them, which makes it easy to just chill and take them out from behind. They also work well as an intimidating enemy type in the early game for newcomers. I remember really struggling with them on my first playthrough. I also like how they start throwing pots at you later. Number 37, Tree Women. I just think these enemies work super well aesthetically with their area. I like how you get fooled by the weirdly lifelike trees at first, thinking they just look odd, but then later on they actually are alive. They mostly just act kind of like support units blowing cold winds at you and shooting these little flames at you, though I definitely prefer the ones who don't do that. And they have decent enough melee swings along with a grab attack. There's not a whole lot to say about them in terms of combat, but I don't find them overly annoying, and I just think they're cool. Fighting too many wolves near them can be a nuisance though. Number 36, Skeletons. The skeletons are pretty similar in quality to a lot of the basic hollow enemies to me. They can come in large numbers, but due to them not having much health, it usually doesn't get overly annoying, unless they keep spamming that one stupid consumable. I also think it's cool how they have moves that are super reminiscent of their Dark Souls 1 counterparts. But unlike Dark Souls 1, we don't have to deal with the stupid-ass necromancers endlessly reviving them. Instead, there's just a chance that they might come back one time. So overall, they work well enough, and they're obviously very fitting in the catacombs. At number 35, I have a bunch of different variants of regular hollows. And those variants are grave wardens, basic hollows, hollow soldiers, elite hollow soldiers, hollow assassins, the worker hollow variants, jailer hollows, sages prentices, and the devote hollows. Overall, these different versions clump together create a pretty nice blend as the game's base enemy type. They do a good job at easing you into the combat early game, and they can work pretty well in groups as you go further on. And of course, things just wouldn't be the same without them. Hollows are a big part of what gives the world of Dark Souls its identity, and even if they aren't the most fun to fight, you gotta have some respect for them. Number 34, Irithylian Slaves. These guys are pretty reminiscent of regular Hollows, except they also have their invisibility mechanic, where you can't see them until they get close enough, and I think it's decently well executed. It's also cool how sometimes you can see their glowing eyes in the distance, and they create a cool, creepy atmosphere in this dark room. So these guys are basically like regular Hollows with a fun gimmick thrown on top. Number 33, Baron Followers. Similar to the previous entry, these guys are kinda reminiscent of regular Hollows, but just bring a little more to the table. They're a fair bit more capable than them, and they're just generally cooler. They have different variants which fight with shield and spear, chuck spears, and use torches to blow fire. Overall, I think they're placed pretty well and can create some tense, but still reasonably difficult situations. I also appreciate how they help the first DLC to feel more unique by having enemies that feel equipped for a snowy environment, and aren't just reused Hollows from the base game. Number 32, Giants. These guys are like the epitome of inoffensive enemies that are also decently fun to fight. Just not fun enough to actually put them in the good tier though. Most of their moveset is pretty slow and not particularly exciting, except for when they occasionally go on a mini rampage, which is actually really dangerous. All in all, they're not super memorable, but I like them enough. And at the top of the average tier, I have the Judicators. The Judicators are a really cool idea for an enemy that, overall, is actually executed pretty well. I love how the initial encounter against one seems absolutely ridiculous at first, until you learn that the gravestones are actually perfectly placed to give you cover as you move along. So while I like their inclusion in the game, I think they just belong in the average tier for two reasons. The first is because, while the initial Judicator is pretty well executed, it's also just a little too punishing. Some of the skeletons in the area can get in your way, and if you don't perfectly make it behind cover, then you're dead almost instantly. And the second reason is because I kind of go back and forth on how I feel about the one in the swamp. As an enemy by itself, I think it usually works fine, but it just doesn't feel balanced whatsoever being surrounded by a ton of other enemies. You literally have to clear the entire section if you want a fair fight with it, otherwise you'll likely just get surrounded. So while I do really like the Judicators, I feel most comfortable just leaving them here. Starting off the good tier at number 30, I have the Hooded Corvian Knight. 
Similarly to the regular Corvian Knights, I'm a bit on the fence with this guy. At times it feels like he can be a bit too punishing, but the main difference with this one is that I actually find fighting it to be really fun sometimes. I love dodging the quick rapier stabs, the move where he stands on top of it, and him jumping backwards, tossing kunai around. It's honestly really cool. In fact, I actually had this guy a fair bit higher on the list at one point, but I still think the moveset can be a bit too erratic and demanding at times. While I have gotten some clean fights with him here and there, I just don't feel confident enough to actually call him a great enemy. So even though I've had more fun with this guy than some that are higher than him, I think it's most fitting at the bottom of good. Number 29, Axe Hollows. These enemies do a great job at being a step up in difficulty compared to the regular Hollows. They're a bit bigger, have a bit more health, and are a lot more punishing. Between the two, I personally prefer the ones with great axes, but the halberd wielding version is just about as good. For anyone whose first Soulsborne game is Dark Souls 3, I think I think they're a nice introduction to the idea of more beefy enemies meant to be taken seriously, since almost all of the enemies you've seen up until then are just regular hollows. As the game goes on, I think they're used in some pretty well-placed ganks, and they're never overused, so I don't get tired of them. Number 28, Fire Witches. I feel like if these dudes were placed better, then they'd be the perfect mage type enemy. All three of their spells are punishing if you get hit by them, but they're also very well telegraphed. Plus, I think their armor just looks awesome. But their placements are a bit questionable. This street section is almost kinda manageable, but there's definitely a few too many enemies in it. And that big gank at the end of the street is way too much. I don't know why they went so overboard with how many there are. So ideally, I would've liked to have these guys higher, but unfortunately, their placements just don't live up to their potential. Number 27, Neon Genesis Evangelists. While I don't think these enemies have the same potential as the Fire Witches, their placements are a lot more balanced. Plus, they actually are really solid. They have their giant maces with some slow and deliberate attacks, one ranged spell, and their fiery grab move. I think they're easily one of the most memorable enemies in the early game, and over time I've learned to appreciate them a lot more. Plus, I love their weird laughs, the echoing sounds of their maces being used as walking sticks, and they have some memorable voice acting. Number 26, Giant Giants. There are two main reasons why I felt these enemies deserve to be here. One, because I love the initial surprise when one jump scares you in Cathedral of the Deep, and two, because I like how there are different approaches to how you can fight them. If you manage to get under their feet, they are admittedly just way too easy. They attack super slowly, and half the time don't even have good aim since you can just run right through their legs. But you can also fight two of them by standing on a ledge closer to the top of them, which turns them into a fight that's reminiscent of Old Iron King and Ceaseless Discharge. Obviously, being compared to those bosses means they're not exactly groundbreaking, but once again I just like how there are multiple approaches for dealing with them. Plus, since they don't respawn when killed, it's satisfying to clear your path and make things a bit easier for yourself if you end up dying. And I just can't deny that they were a super memorable part of my first playthrough. Number 25, Lycanthropes. In the early game, these guys come off as really intimidating. The sounds they make with their rattling chains and creepy designs are pretty cool in my opinion. They almost feel like they belong in Bloodborne. And I also think they're genuinely fun to fight since they're they're really aggressive and have some quick moves. They do have this one long combo that can come across as a bit spammy, but if you were to fight these things back to back with the Corvian Knights, you could tell that there's a clear difference. As long as you're mindful of that one combo, they're generally not too punishing, so I mostly just tend to have a good time while fighting them. Plus, despite them mostly being found in an area with tons of enemies, they're often placed in a way that doesn't cause you to get ganked, so I find them to be pretty respectable. Number 24, Monstrosity of Sin. Obviously, these things are mostly carried by their design. I love when FromSoft just flexes their ability to cook up some absolutely horrendous looking creatures. And I'd say that the moveset is also pretty solid and well telegraphed. In a way, these things almost fight like mini covetous demons, just flopping around and trying to fall on top of you or butt slam you, or of course, try to eat you whole with their terrifying jizz palm mouths. But I gotta say, their biggest flaw is definitely the one room where there are three of them together. On their own, I think they work perfectly fine, but putting them in a gank is just a terrible idea in my opinion. At number 23, I have one of the most iconic foes of the Dark Souls trilogy, the Mimics. First things first, you gotta respect the gimmick to them. I'm sure that even after all this time, these things probably still have some haters, but to me, this trilogy of games just wouldn't be the same if you were able to feel comfortable opening every chest you encountered. And aside from that, I love their weird designs. They just have such an unsettling presence to them, with their lanky limbs and ridiculously long tongues. Plus, their moveset is actually pretty solid. It can be decently demanding, but they also have some noticeable pauses in between their attacks, and they have a grab where they can eat you, which helps keep you on edge throughout. There's also the other version that walks on all four limbs, and they're fine I guess, but they are significantly easier to kill. 
Number 22, Locust Preachers. These guys are surprisingly fun and memorable. They have a nicely varied and super fair moveset, which also involves a weapon art that looks really cool. And I get a lot of satisfaction from using their own weapons against them. I also find it hilarious when they're under the water and their goofy little faces are just sticking out. Also, them saying, I shall partake, is so amusing to me, and I don't really know why. I shall I shall partake. I shall partake. I shall partake. While they can be a bit ganky here and there, it usually never feels overwhelming to me, especially since, like most enemies in Dark Souls 3, they can be pretty easily stunlocked. The one flaw would just be the annoying wax attack that slows you down, but they usually don't do it that often anyway. Number 21, Herald Knights. So, the Herald Knights are an unfortunate circumstance of being an enemy type that I actually really like, but are brought down by a certain reason, and I think every one of you who's played the game knows what I'm talking about. That street section in the Ring City is one of the most ludicrously abhorrent ganks in the entire series. This shit is straight up vile. It's like an amalgamation of all the tomfoolerishness present within this series bundled into one nice middle finger to the player. First, you walk out into this awesome looking section and you're like, oh, there's a Herald Knight approaching. Except no, there's three actually. But then you go even further and realize, no, no, no. There's six actually. What? And yes, I am aware that they're super weak to plunging attacks, and that can make this section a bit more bearable, but in all honesty, I just run past this part pretty much every time. However, these enemies are still pretty high, because on their own, I actually like them a lot. I love their unconventional, but still kinda cool designs. Their attacks are generally really punishing, but also very telegraphed. And I honestly just think they're fun to fight. But due to their awe-inspiringly horrendous street section, they're held back from a higher spot. Number 20, Deep Accursed. First of all, these things looking like giant, terrifying, almost insect-like creatures, combined with the fact that they always drop from the ceiling, is a good combination for some spooks. But aside from that, these things are actually pretty competent enemies. My only two flaws would be that giving you a curse status ailment is dumb, and I think the bite attack is just a little too fast to reasonably dodge every time. But aside from that, these weird lanky monsters actually have pretty fair, but also very demanding movesets, and I think they're a well-constructed challenge. Just make sure to get rid of any nearby enemies enemies before fighting them, because you do not want to deal with them in ganks. Number 19, Elder Grooves. I feel like a fair amount of people won't be on board with this placement. The main thing going against them is just the fact that they're mostly found in swamp sections where you're forced to fat roll. But if you bring them over to some solid land, I think they're actually really good. I love how most of their attacks are a combination of an initial melee hit, and the spell that it casts coming after you a few seconds later. It just feels really fair and deliberate. I can't think of any attacks they have that don't feel fair. But I will admit that I also have a small amount of personal bias towards them. Dark Souls 3 was the first FromSoft game I played, meaning the vibe of these games was still very new and intriguing to me, and I just remember being legitimately scared of these guys on my first playthrough. Something about their faces, combined with being super tall and using staffs the size of literal trees that also shoot skulls at you while walking surprisingly fast, meanwhile you may be stuck in a swamp that slows you down, genuinely made me uneasy. And these days I still think they look really cool, and the giant tree staffs are awesome. Number 18, Giant Crabs. I honestly find it really surprising just how good these enemies actually are. In terms of design, I don't think they're super cool or anything, but I have to admit that the fine line I mentioned in the intro about the best enemies demanding enough to require your attention while also not being too spammy is pretty much nailed here. And one thing I really appreciate is that despite them having an attack that messes with your movement and makes you slower for a short period, it actually doesn't affect your rolls whatsoever, so I don't really mind it. There's also the icy version of them, whose only difference aside from aesthetics is just that they shoot frostbite instead of the mobility reducing attack. But yeah, these things are honestly just really well made. Number 17, Cathedral Grave Wardens. I think these guys are just really solid all around. While their designs aren't super unique or anything, I still think they look pretty cool. And along with that, they have a fun and surprisingly deceptive moveset. In a way, they almost feel kind of like Dancer of the Boreal Valley, the way they fluidly sway around and how it can sometimes be hard to guess when their combos will end. And that, combined with their cool weapon art and their rare attack where they shoot a fireball, makes them fun enough for me to consider them a high good tier enemy. Not quite with the best of the best, but still a lot of fun. Number 16, Gargoyles. I've always had a bit of a mixed relationship with these things. I don't really like where the first one is placed since it's not the most fair spot for a fight, and they can potentially have some pretty annoying ganks inside the capital. But at the end of the day, I think they look awesome, and the ones with flame hammers have a surprisingly engaging moveset. 
The ones with spears aren't bad either, but they can spend a bit too much time just floating in the air trying to poke at you. However, the ones with flame hammers really are awesome. I think they have a great flow of how long it takes between their attacks, and the extra fireballs that they shoot out force you to be mindful of where you dodge, which just adds so much to the fun factor. I also think it's cool how they can use their wings as a shield, even if they do occasionally use them too often. And finishing off the good tier, I have the Boreal Outrider Knights. First of all, these guys look so cool. Their armor along with the frost slowly coming out of them is such an awesome effect in my opinion. And on top of that, these dudes have one of the most engaging movesets in the game. There are few enemies that keep me on edge the way they do. The only reason why they aren't in the great tier is because realistically, I think they may be a bit too demanding. It's kind of hard to judge at this point because I've pretty much got their moveset down, but often when they get a hit on you, there isn't much time for a healing window afterward which can lead to some frustrating deaths. And occasionally, I feel like some of their swings may be a hair too fast. So I really like them personally, but if I'm being honest, I just don't think they're quite fine-tuned enough to be in the great tier. Number 14, Winged Knights. And at last, we've made it to the great tier. Keep in mind that all of the enemies from here on I've gone back and forth with many times. I think they're all deserving of a spot up here, and I've tried my hardest to get them in a suitable order. So we're starting things off with the Winged Knights. These guys are another enemy type that I hadn't properly fought in a long time, and I was pleasantly surprised to find out that they're actually really fun. Their moves set has pretty good pacing, and the version with the hatchets also has a surprisingly deceptive timing on one of its combos that's really satisfying to properly dodge. I also think they look pretty cool, and the big spinny combo is a nice signature attack. But ultimately, they ended up at the bottom of the tier because, while their moves are fun to dodge, they just don't have quite enough different attacks to keep things super interesting. But overall, I think these thick boys are some of the most fun enemies in the game. Number 13, Ravenous Crystal Lizards. Easily one of the coolest looking enemies. The combination of their weird lizard bodies along with having the crystal shit all over them makes for one of my favorite designs in the game. And along with that, they have a really unique moveset. They can roll around, try to bite you, and shoot their crystal breath. They have just enough different moves to where I can never really guess what will come next. I also think placing one in a hidden spot of the first area was a great choice, since they're a good challenge for new players, or a nice way to shake off the cobwebs for veterans. The only reason they're on the lower side of great is that I personally find them a little too easy when you know their moves. I love the variation, but all of the remaining enemies just tend to do a better job of keeping me on my toes. Number 12, Sullivan's Beasts. First of all, these things look like they're inspired from the Beast of Darkness from Berserk, and that's awesome. But also, they're just really solid. I love the initial ambush with the first one. While you're busy taking in the beautiful scenery of Irithyll, all of a sudden... When it comes to the moveset, I've seen some people complain about the hitboxes on these things, but personally, after fighting them many times for this video, I think they're totally reasonable. And in general, I think the moves are just really well paced. You get plentiful windows for attacking, while at the same time, you always have to watch out for what will come next. They also just look cool, and do a great job of being genuinely intimidating. I actually really wanted to put these guys higher, but I kept them where they are because of this one charge attack that's kind of awkward, and the fact that there's a gank with them. Fighting multiple beasts at once is way too overwhelming. Number 11, Pontiff Knights. I think these guys represent one of the biggest difficulty spikes in the game. Once you make it into Irithyll, these knights are the main enemy type of the area, which is a lot to deal with compared to previous levels. These guys are super fast and have really quick attacks, as well as combos that can last for days. Overall, I like their designs, they do a good job of keeping the player on edge, and some of their magic attacks are cool. But they're brought down by the length of their combos occasionally being a bit redundant, and they have a few too many ganks, which doesn't really work for them since they're already a hassle to deal with solo. Also, screw this projectile. Number 10, Dark Wraiths. Seeing these guys return from Dark Souls 1 is cool, since they're definitely one of my favorite enemies from that game. And similarly to the Pontiff Knights, they attack really fast and keep you on edge, except these guys don't also come with redundantly long combos. Admittedly, their moveset isn't as varied as some others, but I really don't mind, since they just do a great job at always keeping you busy. Plus, I think their shields are cool, and they still have their soul-sucking move. I also just personally love when you see enemies fighting other enemies in games, which which you get a nice display of as they chop up the Grues leading to the Abyss Watchers arena. Number 9, Black and Silver Knights. Another standout enemy returning from Dark Souls 1. And overall the best thing about these guys in comparison to other enemies is their different variations and their poise. These guys come
come with straight swords, spears, great swords, halberds, and great axes, which gives them a lot of variety, with my favorite being the ones with Black Knight Ultra Great Swords. And like a lot of the other best knights, they don't fall victim to being easily R1 spammed to death. Therefore, you have to respect your encounters with them and actually take the time to get used to their movesets. Unfortunately for them, this game managed to introduce some new knight type enemies which surpassed these guys, but even so, I still think they're pretty fun. And the archers section is a fun little callback to the original one. Number 8, Karthus Swordsman. Probably my most controversial choice in the great tier, since admittedly, I think they may be a little too fast for the game's combat. But I just can't help it. Fighting these guys is so much fun. And unlike the Outrider Knights and Corvian Knights, they aren't too punishing on you when you mess up. I love seeing them dash all over the place, flipping backward, tossing knives at you, and then predicting when they'll dash towards you to get a quick hit in is so satisfying. It's fast, fluid, and fun. I honestly think the pacing between their moves is almost perfect. Plus, they look so damn cool. They're such edgelords with their tattered, hooded robes. But yes, I do agree with complaints that they feel like they belong in Bloodborne or Sekiro, which would make them a bit more manageable. But as they are, I just can't help but still think they're awesome. Number 7, Ascended Wing. Knights. While it might seem weird that I have them significantly higher than the other winged knights, I genuinely think that their ability to fly around the place just makes these guys so much more fun to fight than the vanilla ones. It causes your duels with them to be a lot more tense, since they can quickly close distance whenever they feel like it. Plus, they can also add some latitude to their regular swings now, which is cool. And I also just think the gold designs are awesome. I've heard some people argue that their gank is a bit tedious, but personally, I think it's pretty easy to just split them up and fight them one at a time, so overall, I have zero complaints. Number 6, Demons. First of all, who could forget charging into battle with Siegmeier against one of these things? By Siegward of the Knights of Katarina, fight by your side! Ah! What a hype, dude. But anyway, these enemies are easily deserving of a top spot if you ask me. They look cool as hell, they have lots of varying attacks including axe swings, fire moves, and some that combine both. It's just really hard to deny the sheer spectacle these guys provide. You usually don't see stuff like this outside of boss fights. It's also fun to watch skeletons attempt to fight this one and then just immediately get stomped by it. My only complaint is that I wish there were more of them since they're so much fun. Number 5, Stray Demon. Out of all the familiar faces from Dark Souls 1, this guy easily got the biggest upgrade. Fighting the Stray Demon boss from that game and then fighting this enemy version is like night and day. The only thing that's the same as the original is the butt slam move, but but other than that, this guy has way more engaging timings on his swings, some cool unique moves like shooting rocks at you, and an optional second phase where if you destroy his legs then he'll have to face you on the ground, kind of like Lawrence. For a while I had this guy in the top 3, but I kept him at number 5 since the remaining enemies all have the advantage of more variety. And I also think this one grab attack comes out a bit too quickly and often means instant death, which I think is a little too punishing. Number 4, Millwood Knights. So now that we're at the top 4, all of the remaining enemies are pretty interchangeable. On another day, they may end up in a different order, but as of right now, I'd say the Millwood Chad Knights are my least favorite of the peak enemies. But of course, they're still awesome. I love their designs. Even when considering how many types of knights there are in these games, I think these guys stand out as having some of the most unique looking armor in the series. The ones with shields and axes have a pretty solid and aggressive moveset, even if they do hide behind their shields a little too much. The Millwood Chieftain using the Earth Seeker is also really cool, but for me the highlight is definitely the ones with Quakestone Hammers. Something about the timing of their attacks just feels smooth as butter to me. They also have the ability to slam their hammer into the ground and pull it out causing an AoE, which is a cool callback to the Stone Guardians in Dark Souls 1. But the main reason I have these guys outside the top 3 is because of their placements. Some of the enemies to come also have a few questionable sections, but man, these guys truly have some really shitty ganks. And there's the pesky one that snipes you off of the branch descent. Number 3, Lothric Knights. Out of the top 4 enemies, these guys easily have the lowest poise, but that's also kind of nice since you can freely try out weapon arts on them. Whenever I want to test a weapon art I've never used before, I usually just rush straight to a Lothric Knight, but they can be pretty effective at dealing with this weakness since they have some solid stability with their shields, and the ones with great shields can just tank almost everything with them. I'd say that all 3 versions of these guys are really solid. The ones with straight swords are fast and aggressive, but just passive enough to where they aren't annoying. The ones with great shields shields can be a bit of a hassle, but with proper patience, or just the stance weapon art, they aren't that bad. But my favorites have to be the ones with great swords. Their solid range and high damage capability makes them pretty respectable, and they're definitely the version where you have to be the most on edge since one mistake can often mean death. 
but of course, it's just fun all the while. I really appreciate these guys for basically being the template for a lot of FromSoft's modern knight enemies. They're just really smooth and fun. Number 2, Cathedral Knights. For some reason I feel like this placement will be controversial, since I've never really seen anyone speak out about liking these guys. But regardless, this is where I think they belong. One of my favorite things about them is just how intimidating they are. The fact that they're so damn tall combined with the clinking sound effects as they run towards you. along with the fact that they're just super aggressive and deal lots of damage, really helps them stand out as a memorably menacing enemy type. Plus, these guys have some god-tier poise as far as Dark Souls 3 enemies go. Good luck staggering them with a straight sword. The great sword variants of these guys are so much fun once you learn them. The delays on their swings are basically perfect if you ask me. It still manages to throw me off sometimes, but when you get it right, it just feels so fluid and clean. The Mason Great Shield version can spend a bit too much time hiding behind their shields, but other than that, I love them as well, and they have a buff where they can leave lingering explosions, which is awesome in my opinion. And I won't lie, I do have a little bias towards these chads since they have one of my favorite designs in the game. Maybe I'm just a fan of bucket helmets. So if you ask me, the Cathedral Knights are about as fun as enemies get in this game. They're definitely one of the most challenging enemy types when you first encounter them, and I feel like that just makes it all the more satisfying when you get their moves down but it's just really hard to deny how great the number one spot is. And as many of you have probably already guessed, I believe the best enemy type of Dark Souls 3 is the Ringed Knights. It's just really hard to deny it when they have such thrilling and fair movesets along with possibly the most cool factor of any enemy. I love the basic sword version. Their flaming combo is super flashy, and I love when they shoot fire with their shields as they slowly come in for a melee slice. The spear and great shield variants are also probably my favorite version out of From Software's spear knight types, since even though they can be annoyingly passive at times, like most of them, it's counteracted pretty well with the aggression they gain from their weapon arts. But my favorite version just has to be the ones with Ringed Knight paired great swords. They're the most aggressive of the three since they don't have a shield to hide behind, and the timing of their swings is about as close to perfect as an enemy can get. Plus their weapon arts are somehow even cooler than the other two. These guys were such a great way for FromSoft to go out with a bang in the final DLC of this game, giving us possibly their coolest and most fun knight type enemy even to this day. So from my point of view, they're without a doubt the best enemies in the game. Man, it almost feels kinda surreal that this project is actually finished, but I'm glad I could continue being the guy who shines some light on the enemies in these games. And while I know the ranking definitely isn't perfect, there are only so many times I can double check a list of 79 enemies, so I think it ended up good enough. Also, as far as my next video, I'm kind of in a weird situation. Originally, I planned to make a God of War video, but then Lies of P came out and was way better than I expected, and now Lords of the Fallen is being released, so there's quite a few directions I could go in from here. Regardless, I'd like to thank anyone who's made it this far, since this is the longest video I've made up until this point. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.